Now, there was a time not that long ago when I never would have considered editing my images on my iPad. But over recent times, both Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad have really improved. So now, especially when traveling, it's something that I will often do. And this mobile workflow is becoming increasingly popular. So in this video, I thought I'd go through a quick edit of this image to show the workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop entirely on the iPad, and then finish off with a print. All right, so here we are then. I'm in Lightroom on my iPad, and this is an image here that I took with my iPhone. So I wanna go through the edit of it, and I tend to start with the first things that jump out at me that need fixing, and straight away, I can see that it needs straightening. So I'll just go to the geometry section, and I'll tick on the, or turn on the upright checkbox, and we can see there, fixes that straight away, which is great. The next thing is I'm drawn to this bottom left area here, which is part of the wall, which I couldn't get out of the shot. So I'll go to the uh, remove tool, make sure that the generative AI is turned on, and I'll just brush over this area here, like so. Give that a few seconds for the software to take a look at it to see what it can do to replace it. And it's done a pretty good job straight away, but I'll have a look at the refine section here and just tap to see the other variations that it's given me. So we've got, that's the first one, the second one, I quite like that one, and then the third one. I think I'm gonna go with the second one just there, so I'll click on Done. Now what I'm gonna do with this is make this a black and white image, and I've got a preset, which uh, actually while I'm looking at this, that straight line doesn't, the, the horizon still looks a little bit off. So let's go to the Crop tool, and let's just drag this just to see if it is still off. Probably that bears a little bit better. Um, yeah, I wanna make this a black and white, and what I've got is I've got a preset, so I'll go to my presets in the upper left. These are all synced over from my uh, Lightroom desktop, and the one I'm gonna use is this one here, Sunny Day at Lime, right at the bottom. I'll tap on that, and we can see a nice black and white conversion, and because of how I've made this, if I tap on it again, we can see we get the amount slider, so I can increase it or decrease it, depending on how contrast I want it to look. So I'll probably go with around about there for now, but I do notice straight away that the sky needs to match in with it. So I'll click on done, and then I'll go to the masking, and I'll come down to the bottom here, click on the plus, and I'll choose select sky. Now it'll do the, what we usually see here, once it's got the selection in, we see the red overlay, but as is usually the case at the moment, when we do this uh, selection of the sky, it does tend to spill over a little bit more than we want, as we can see where the red overlay is going onto the distant hills, uh, on the left and right in the middle there. So what I'll do is I will drag out on the masking here and I'm gonna to go to subtract from mask and select sky. I have to do this because we currently don't have that intersect command in Lightroom Mobile. So I'll go select sky and when I do that, you're kind of left with the feathered edge of that original sky selection. And then I just need to invert it. And I can do that by coming to the bottom right hand corner of Lightroom on the iPad and just tap in the invert icon just there. So it's improved it. It's not perfect because you can still see it in the middle bit, but it's certainly better than what it was. Then I'll go to the effects panel and we'll just bring back some detail in the sky with the dehaze. So maybe something like that would work. Maybe a little bit of clarity as well. Something like that. Okay, and click on done. Uh, let's go to the sharpening, let's go to detail. I'm gonna boost up the shot. I'm gonna take this a little bit further than I ordinarily would because there's something I wanna show you. If I zoom in, I'll pinch to zoom in. On this distant lamppost here, you probably see it now that there's a little bit of a halo going around it. So I need to kind of get rid of that, but I can't really do that easily in Lightroom. So this is definitely gonna mean a bit of a round trip over into Photoshop, which is obviously on the iPad. So yeah, I'll just double tap on the picture there to send it back to full view like so but I will now go over into Photoshop. Um, in fact, before I do, let's just double tap with two fingers to see the histogram. I can see that we're right over in the shadow area, but I know where that is. That's right down in this bottom left-hand corner. And I'm quite happy with that. Everywhere else, plenty of detail. But let's get this over into Photoshop then. So I'll go to the top right-hand corner, click on the share icon, and here we have edit in Photoshop. So I'll tap on that. It then prepares the image, and then it'll open it up in Photoshop on the iPad. And this does take a little bit of kind of familiarization where th certain things are, but once you've maybe spent 15, 20 minutes or so, you really start to get a hang for where things are within it. 
But uh, the first thing I need to do then is to fix that halo. I can see that just there on that lamppost. So what I will do is exactly what I would do if I was working in Photoshop on my desktop computer. I would do this using the clone stamp tool on a blank layer. So I'm gonna come over to the right hand side and where we've got the layers here, I'm gonna tap and I'm gonna go new layer. So now we have a new blank layer. And on the left hand side where we've got the tools, I will come to where we have the clone stamp tool and down the bottom in the toolbar, we have these three dots. Now, because I'm working on a blank layer and I'm gonna be cloning, I need to, I'm gonna tap on those three dots and set the sample here to current and below. Now, by default, just as it would be in Photoshop on the desktop, it'll be set to current layer, but I'm gonna go with current and below, and that'll do fine just there. And also over in the right-hand side where we have the blend mode for this new layer, I'm gonna ch change it from normal to darken. And the reason for that is I'm now gonna sample areas of the image to try to cover over that halo. And it will only darken areas that I clone over that are brighter than where I'm sampling. So it'll only darken those down. It will darken nothing else. Let me show you what I mean. So we'll choose darken on that one. And let's just pinch to zoom in on this uh, lamppost just here. So I wanna try and get rid of the halo going around it. Now with the clone stamp tool down the bottom, here we have the uh, source here where we can click to sample a source to clone. So I'll tap on that, it goes blue. And then I'll just tap on a part of the image to say, look, this is where I want to clone. So I'll go with say there. And then I'm gonna brush around the um, lamppost. And you can see now, look, it's only darkening down areas. In fact, that's probably just a little bit too much on that. Let's just go for a slightly bigger brush, like so. And I'll sample again, just stay there and brush over. So it's only gonna be darkening areas that are brighter than where I'm sampling. And as I move around, I'm just gonna keep sampling different areas so that it's not quite so obvious where I'm sampling from. Come all the way down here. I can brush really quickly to get rid of that. But let's just sample that just a little bit further over there. Brushing down like so. So that's got rid of it there. I need to get rid of it on the underside of the actual um, lamppost here at the top as well. So I'll sample again and just brush in. And I can be really quite loose with this because I'm using that dark and blend mode is only going to clone over areas that are brighter than where my clone source is coming from. So really, really useful blend mode to use when we're using the clone stamp tool. So I'll come down, a little bit on this bottom part here where we've got the hills in the distance, so I'll sample on there, and again, just brush over. Like so, sample again, keep sampling. And we'll do the other side. Really quick, really easy to do. But look, if I turn that layer off now, I'll come over to the right-hand side where we've got this eye icon, and I'll just press it down to turn that layer off and on, off and on. You can see now, look, keep an eye on the lamppost, I'll turn that layer off. That's off and on, off and on. So very easy to get rid of that halo using that dark and blend mode when we're using the clone stamp tool. But let me just double tap now on the image to go back to uh, full view. I'll just come out of there, go to the move tool, sorry. Double tap on it to go back to full view, which is cool. And I think really there's nothing else much that I wanna do in here, but I do quite fancy doing that autumn kind of effect that we'd sometimes add onto landscapes and seascapes, where there's just a, a faint kind of glow kind of effect to it. Very, very simple to do with this. So what I'll do then is I'm going to, first of all, I don't need to worry about this cloning that I've done. I can get rid of that. I think I can just merge that down. And what I'll do then is I'll duplicate this layer and then we'll go to some uh, effects and I'm gonna to go to Gaussian blur and I've got the blur amount here. And generally when we're doing this effect in this particular way, we tend to blur, the amount that we blur is kind of in direct relation to what megapixels the image is. And I think this one here was taken as a long exposure and at the time with a 15 Pro Max iPhone. So it took it down to like a 12 megapixel image. So I'll give it a blur roughly around about 12, something like that. That should be enough and I'll click on done, and then I'll change the blend mode of this uh, layer here. We'll go for uh, soft light, I just find it just there, soft light, 
And then what I will do is just lower the opacity down to round about maybe 20, something like that. And again, look, I can turn that layer off and on, off and on. Pretty cool. So that's so far. I've done work in Lightroom, sent it into Photoshop to do stuff that I can't do in Lightroom that easily using that cloning. Added a bit of a glow to it. All I need to do now then is send it back over into to, uh, Lightroom where I could then look at just checking it over and maybe doing a print. But all of this here, I could have been doing sat in a cafe or sat in a hotel room or whatever, but certainly not sat at my desk with my main computer. So that's the convenience of it. But I'll now click on Center Lightroom. It says here it's right in the Photoshop format, takes no time at all, and then bang straight over into Lightroom. Here we go. And let's just tap on it to open it up. Pinch to zoom. Yeah, and there is our edited image just there. So now I can check this over. This will sync over into my desktop. In fact, let's take a look now over in my desktop. Let's go and have a look, see what's uh, what's come through. So with that, when we're in the Lightroom mobile, once you're, if you're in full view like that, you'll find that it won't start the syncing. But the minute you press to make it go into like grid view, where you've got the thumbnails, then you'll see in the upper right-hand corner that the, th the sync starts to kick in, then that will sync over to your desktop version. So there you go. There's the final image edited completely on the iPad, uh, which now we can go and do a print with. Everything's looking good. If we have a look at the histogram, let's go and bring up the histogram just in here. Everything's looking good. The dark areas are certainly down here. So I think for soft proofing, I might just bring up some information in those uh, darker areas just there. Let's just turn that off. Yeah, let's do a print. All right, so there you go then. That is the print. This is on like um, a matte paper, fine art texture paper. So it takes a little bit while for the, the ink to settle in, so more details come through, but already very, very happy with that. So that image there then edited completely on my iPad in both Lightroom and Photoshop. Once I'd finished with it, it then syncs back into my Lightroom. Um, and then I kind of went through a little bit of soft proofing before then doing this particular print here. Great thing about this is, um, whether you're a Lightroom Classic user or a desktop user, if you create a collection in Classic and sync it, you can do the same thing. Obviously in Lightroom Desktop, it syncs across anyway, but there you go, final print and not a halo in sight. All done in Lightroom and Photoshop on my iPad. Exciting times. But I don't show you this so that you can say, well, from now on, you don't need to edit on your desktop. Far from it. I do know people that do that. But it's to show that there are options, credible options now when it comes to editing. Because if you're doing some traveling, or maybe you just want to sit on the sofa rather than in front of your computer, you can do the edit. You can go all the way through it. But then obviously it then syncs across into your desktop, your main computer, where you can do some final tweaks with it to check everything's looking exactly how you want it to be. But you can get a long, long way done with your edit purely on the iPad. So yeah, exciting times. Right, I'll leave you to it. I'll catch you in the next video.